Well, we're back in the man cave, or the science cave, we should say. We're going to talk about uh, moisture in the atmosphere. Moisture in the atmosphere. Well, this moisture in the atmosphere is a typically it's in the form of water vapor. Uh, moisture in the atmosphere can be uh, any type of precipitation also. But let's look at uh, some of the phases that water can go through. And uh, we're pretty familiar with these. And let's look at the uh, going from solid to liquid to water vapor. Solid water, ice, as you, as you well know, it melts, turns into liquid water, and liquid water can evaporate and turn into water vapor. And this water vapor, along with the energy of the sun, really drives weather as we think of it. Well, water vapor can condense into liquid water. Uh, we call that, you know, rain. Or it can freeze into solid water. You know, you think of uh, hail, sleet, and snow. <laughs> and I think we're all pretty familiar with this. One thing you may not be familiar with is the way energy is either absorbed or released. When water goes from a solid to the gas, energy is absorbed. The solid water has to absorb energy to melt. The liquid water has to absorb energy to evaporate into the gaseous phase or the water vapor phase. Water vapor, on the other hand, when it condenses, releases energy to the surroundings and this is very very important when water freezes it also releases energy to the surroundings uh, make sure in class probably after holidays you ask ask me about why uh, Florida citrus growers will actually water their crops if there's a freeze coming sounds counterintuitive but it actually uh, makes perfect sense one thing you, we need to talk about here real quickly is a term called latent heat. When we have latent heat, that is heat or energy put into the system, but there's no change in temperature. You know, you kind of think of every time you, uh, you put energy into the system, or you warm things up, temperature does rise. But for melting to occur, as you start putting energy into the system, the temperature of this water ice mixture won't rise until all the solid water is melted. Well, that energy is stored, and that is called latent heat. Same thing when it evaporates. You know, if you think you're, you know, you start boiling water, you keep putting energy and energy and energy into it until it finally starts to boil. Well, that is latent heat. So latent heat, really, when you have latent heat, there is no change in temperature. No temp change. There is no temp change. Energy is being added or taken out of the system, and you think of the atmosphere as a system, but there's no temperature change. This latent heat, latent energy is really stored. So we think of this as stored energy. Well, from here we can go on to this whole idea of humidity. Humidity is just the amount of moisture in the air and water vapor. is just uh, water vapor in the air. Water vapor in the air. And typically this is anywhere from 0 to 4 percent. Well, you may ask, you know, why don't we call it water gas? Well, a vapor is a the gaseous phase of a substance that is typically found as a solid or a liquid. Water at normal conditions is found as a liquid. So when it evaporates, it is considered a vapor. Uh, gasoline is another one. Gasoline is a liquid. When it evaporates, you talk about the gas vapors. 
So humidity, water vapor in the atmosphere. Well, when you can't add any more water vapor into the atmosphere, it is said to be saturated. When something is saturated, it is full. You know, you're probably going to Thanksgiving dinner and so forth, and when you just can't eat anymore, you are saturated. You're full. You just can't eat anymore. And uh, you can only get so much water vapor in the atmosphere. We did the lab here uh, the other day on uh, when we did relative humidity. And relative humidity relative humidity as we learned is temperature dependent is temperature dependent well, let's see we write it down here temperature dependent dependent and we did learn that warm air Warm air can hold can hold more, and I'm just going to call it water. And again, it's water vapor. Or cold air holds less, and that has to do with the kinetic energy. The faster the molecules are moving, the further they're out apart, and this water vapor can get in between. When air is cold, it has a greater density, and there's just not as much room for it to get into. Uh, one interesting thing, if you keep the amount of water vapor constant, you lower the temperature, you get higher relative humidity. The higher the temperature, the lower the relative humidity. So that's a, a key important part here. The last term I want to talk about and this is what is called the dew point. Let's see if we get a different color here. This is the dew point. Dew point. When we talk about the dew point, this is the temperature. The temperature at which condensation condensation occurs or you think about it, the air can't hold any more water the air cannot cannot hold any more water and again we're speaking in terms of water vapor here the dew point is always lower or equal to the air temperature. So the dew point, and I'm going to just call it DP here, the dew point, oops, that didn't work very well. The dew point is always lower or equal to air temperature. Now you might say, okay, what's the big deal why this is important? Well, we're going to learn here pretty quick. Let's see if I can do a nice little drawing here. This is the surface of the Earth. And as the sun's energy strikes the Earth, and we did learn it strikes the Earth, and it heats it up, and it re-radiates it. Well, as this surface gets heated, it radiates, or it starts to rise, and as we did learn, as air starts to rise into the atmosphere, we know that as you go up into the atmosphere, temperature decreases. Well, as temperature decreases, these molecules slow down. You know, lower temperature, lower kinetic energy, the molecules slow down. And also, as you lower the temperature, the air cannot hold as much moisture. Well, what ends up happening at a certain point in time, if the air gets high enough, all of a sudden you get 
the air starts to condense at a certain level or the water vapor starts to condense at this level and this this is really the bottom of clouds this is the dew point I'm just going to abbreviate DP the dew point really is the bottom of, of the clouds this is where condensation takes place the air rises it cools and as we know as it cools it cannot hold as much moisture so eventually it's going to become saturated so you can think of the dew point is it's also saturated it's really 100 percent relative humidity and it's it's clouds it's the bottom of the clouds that is why during the winter quite often you see the cloud deck is much lower in the sky well what ends up happening as the air is lifting it doesn't have to lift very high into the atmosphere for clouds to form and we'll be talking about this more and more so uh, this is a, uh, a brief overview of uh, water in the in the atmosphere and uh, we'll catch you next time